<coughs> Hello friends, it's me yet again. So, uh, what I wanted to show you today was, um, well, I've, uh, I've been playing with um, sodium silicate uh, crystals. Uh, if you can see them here, uh, these are the same uh, crystals that, um, or the same compound that uh, John Hutchison has um, experimented with uh, to create his um, free energy uh, battery. And um, yeah, I just wanted to play around with them, you know, see if I could create um, a similar effect, or at least, uh, you know, document it or whatever. So here it is. Um, I have the crystals uh, sitting on a, a plate of um, stainless steel. Uh, non-magnetic uh, stainless steel I found that the um, the crystals or the compound that is um, reacts with aluminum and it uh, strongly uh, reacts with uh, tin foil it eats uh, through tin foil and uh, I tried copper uh, copper uh, bowls here but um, the compound uh, absorbs water through the air and the water eventually reacts with the copper and then you get um, you know uh, ox copper oxide or whatever you would call that you know it screws it up in, in other words but uh, it doesn't react with the stainless steel so that's why I'm using it so what I wanted to show you is uh, these um, crystals of sodium silicate uh, just by themselves you know th this is like it's not completely pure but you know it's like 99 percent pure or something like that so uh, one uh, one terminal for my meter is on the plate and the other terminal positive is in my hand so when I touch the crystal as we can see, uh, it seems to produce a small uh, electric current, um, 0.15 volts, and it's registering as negative. So, you know, if I click on another uh, similar effect, uh, you know, negative 0.1 volts, another one, negative. Uh, Oh, you can see it there. So they're all kind of the same. They're all negative. Um, yeah, so the only difference is this one uh, pile here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, basically, it's just uh, some sodium silicate that I mixed with water and I dissolved in some sea salt. Uh, sea salt contains uh, some trace um, elements as well as uh, trace um, metals as far as I as far as I'm aware so uh, if you remember they were all negative so I click or I touch the uh, the one that has the, the sea salt and uh, as you can see it's negative too but um, the interesting thing that I found is that if I just hold it, hold it there for a while it slowly changes it goes down as you can see slowly goes down come on Yeah, see it slowly goes on and it finally bottoms out and then it reverses polarity and uh, starts again but on the positive side.
see there we go oh bottoms out and then turns positive there we go see oh come on yeah so okay there we go oops yeah it was faster before uh, seems to be slower now but it slowly becomes positive so what I was thinking uh, negative again oh I see I'm moving it around that's why I have to hold it still what I was thinking is that the uh, the molecules like the uh, the crystal atoms like the the arrays of um, of atoms of uh, or the molecules I guess you could say of the crystal uh, you know produce um, energy and uh, when there's a bunch of them together they align in a configuration based on the energy or the electricity that they create so in other words um, they're self-aligning and if you if you have um, or if you uh, if you do what I'm doing um, it aligns them and so eventually they start to kind of um, build upon each other and uh, you know it uh, well you can see what happens it the, the voltage increases it or increases over time that's just a theory but you know it's kinda it makes sense I mean there's certain um, there's been reports that um, certain kinds of metal, uh, well, when they harden, um, they turn into a crystal, and that if you run a current through the metal while they are um, hardening, uh, instead of um, fragmented crystals all in a random um, configuration, they'll all be aligned into a coherent uh, whole, which is far stronger and uh, and better than uh, than the fragmented um, uh, material is, and uh, yeah, you know, a coherent uh, crystalline structure contains um, different properties than uh, than fragmented um, crystals contain. So, anyways, yeah, you can see uh, point zero seven. Uh, this is uh, doping of the uh, sodium silicate with uh, sea salt and uh, you know you can use other um, compounds like uh, Himalayan salt or um, powdered um, metals uh, you know John Hutchison has experimented with various uh, metal compounds uh, chrome I think was one of them and some other ones it's actually uh, the same process that they do with uh, transistors where they have uh, you know a transistor is just a crystal which they um, they dope uh, or to say to put it another way is that um, they add trace amounts of uh, metallic atoms to the crystal and these atoms travel into the crystal and uh, sort of um, the crystal itself creates sort of like a um, grid-like structure with the uh, metallic atoms inside of it or uh, a network if you will um, that the crystal has organized and once that net network of metallic atoms is established then uh, you can run electricity through the crystal and the crystal kind of um, you know controls the, um, the flow of the electricity uh, sort of like a valve crystal valves is uh, one name that has been given for uh, transistors in the early days but uh, you know there are other um, applications for that um, technology or that process it can be used to create uh, free energy and you know this goes into like conspiracy folklore with uh, you know I think it was um, what's his name uh, Preston Nichols said that uh, you know the transistors that they found at Roswell um, they seeded into Bell Labs and uh, you know even to this day it's a mystery like who actually invented um, the transistor 
you know, and integrated circuits and that sort of thing. Who, who really came up with it? And the truth is that nobody did. No human came up with the transistor. It was actually uh, alien technology. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, yeah, so that's all for today. Um, thanks for watching, and see you again next time. Bye.